The most iconic part of LEGO Technic is the gearbox. They allow you to seamlessly change speeds or even have a single motor control many different functions independently. What are the 10 most difficult gearboxes to build? Without any further ado, let's begin. The sliding gear transmission, such as the one featured in the test car of 1988, was the first type of Technic gearbox ever. Essentially, you had differently sized gears on a single axle. By sliding it back and forth, you'd engage it into different gears. Thus, you'd have different resulting ratios. What makes this one difficult isn't the sheer complexity, but rather the necessity to align all the gears properly, which could easily make or break everything. Let's look closely at the one in the 1988 car chassis. In the first speed, the motion from the engine travels from the 8 tooth gear to a 24 tooth gear, then it goes from that one to a 16 tooth gear. To understand what the final ratio of the gearbox itself is, simply multiply the two fractions together, and you will get 0.5 in the first speed. This means that for every full rotation, the output will turn half of that, which is 180 degrees. In the second speed, we just have two same sized gears, so we can ignore that, and then we can notice the path traveling from the 16 to a 24 tooth gear, which is just two thirds. In the the third speed, the motion goes from a 24 to a 16 tooth gear, which is just the same ratio but flipped. Sliding gears don't have to be used purely for transmissions. Instead, they can also be used for having a single motor to control many different functions. In the forklift model of the 8082 multi-control set, a single micro motor moves the entire motor assembly. The motor assembly has a set of warm gears. When the motor assembly is in different positions, it causes the set of warms to mesh with the different gears. Thus, the position of the motor assembly would denote which function function is being selected. It makes this set from 1993 to be the first one ever in LEGO Technic to feature a motorized gearbox instead of the 2010 excavator. Isn't this just fascinating? And if you would like to uncover more breathtaking mechanisms from the history of Technic, then make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. No pressure though, no pressure. Just one year following that sliding motorized gearbox, LEGO would introduce the driving ring, which allowed gearboxes to shift much smoother and more reliably. The driving ring sat on top of an axle extender. On both sides of the driving ring axle, there would be gears with a circular hole, so they would be independent of the axle. By sliding the driving ring into one of these gears, the gear now becomes connected to the axle. This was groundbreaking. Specifically, the space shuttle from 1996 took things to unprecedented heights. It had a single motor controlling four different functions independently. You could open the cargo bay, raise the crane, rotate it, as well as activate the spinning axle for the fiber optics light unit. This was the first distribution gearbox using the new driving ring system, and the set actually innovated in many other key aspects. It is one of just two Technic models to include the fiber optic system, and it even contained the highly desirable micro motor used for opening the satellite. I wish something similar existed for the powered up system. It even contained a 2x4 electric plate, which which made it possible to transfer power through your Lego bricks. Even something as simple as the landing gear utilizes complex mechanisms here using a shock absorber. It was quite difficult to build, and this is one of the few Technic models that's compatible with minifigures. <laughs> When I say transmission, the first thing that comes to mind is selecting between some predetermined speeds. But what if you wanted to smoothly go from the slowest to the fastest speed, sort of like accelerating an electric motor? Well, we have the continuously variable transmission. While it was never featured in any official Technic model, Technic fans have come up with clever solutions for smooth shifting. One of these is simply having two cones facing opposite directions. They are connected together with a rubber band which slides along the cones. Essentially, these cones provide a gradient of different gear sizes, which allows for the smooth shifting to happen. Serial made a slightly different kind of this transmission, where we have two truncated cones sliding. Instead of the belt moving, we smoothly change the radius by having the sliding cones here. This changes the diameter of the belt's contact area, thus changing the ratio between the input and output shafts. We also have Nico 71's transmission, which uses a completely different concept, where instead of belts, it utilizes differentials. And yes, this is actually a continuously variable transmission. These are truly genius designs and I greatly wish that LEGO would include these mechanisms in their official models. 
A typical real-life automatic transmission utilizes a series of planetary gears along with clutch packs. Tinkering John recreated the Allison automatic transmission which essentially combines a series of planetary gear sets all connected to each other and you can change speeds by transmitting different speeds into the ring and sun gears. In order to block or release the gears, you use clutch packs. I truly did not think it was even possible to recreate this until I saw this video. The real company behind this project was so impressed that they decided to share this creation on their social media channels. You might be thinking that, well, this still requires manual switching, even if it's automated with some sort of torque sensor. Well, there exists the LEGO clutch gear. It functions like a normal gear, however, with enough resistance applied, the axle will slip. Using this principle along with a clever arrangement of differentials, you're able to make a completely mechanical automatic transmission. In my opinion, LEGO should absolutely make a planetary gearbox in an official set, as well as the differential automatic transmission. We have gotten something like the automatic transmission in the Volvo articulated hauler, but it just slowly changed it to the fastest speed rather than actually detecting the resistance and changing the gears based on that. The LEGO Technic Porsche 911 GT3 RS was a groundbreaking supercar. For the first time in the history of Technic, it implemented a 4-speed sequential transmission with paddle shifters. This was before that orange rotary catch piece introduced in the Bugatti Chiron, so it used an incredibly clever mechanism to make the levers shift the driving rings in a sophisticated way. What made this set difficult is that if you build it following the instructions, the speeds would go in the order first, third, second, and fourth. This is an incredibly easy error to fix. All you have to do is simply swap the red and green pairs of gears here, and it will work just like a normal sequential transmission. You might think that this was an error in the instructions. However, LEGO has actually stated that, supposedly, the wrong order of speeds would make the gearbox work better. Personally, from testing, I have found no significant difference, so I highly recommend doing this mod on your Porsche. Even though it's not the most mechanically advanced, I think it's my favorite Technic supercar. I love the orange color scheme and especially those headlights. I think it is easily the best looking supercar ever produced and look at those brakes too. So gorgeous. The unboxing experience was something else too, featuring that style of experience for the first time ever. The multi-directional gearbox was introduced in 2015 with the crawler crane. Essentially, each driving ring is connected to a specific function. The red gears on either side spin in opposite directions. So, the driving ring lever changes the direction of each function mechanically. It is a very intuitive playing experience, however, the main disadvantage of a multi-directional gearbox is having to use twice as many driving ring axles as a distribution gearbox. So, your gearbox will be larger for the same amount of functions. And you can just change the direction of the motor using the battery box anyway. The crawler crane had four motorized functions. First, you could make it drive either forward or back, then you could turn the superstructure for however long you wanted. We also had boom elevation as well as raising and lowering of the claw. The claw itself had to be opened and closed manually. One fun mod you could do is to have the tracks be independently controlled, each by its own driving ring axle, so that you could make the chassis turn. Personally, I modified this set by removing the gearbox and adding a motor to each axle to make it full RC. It was already such a fun set, but it becomes even better if you make it fully remotely controlled. The Land Rover Defender had an insane gearbox. It utilized a 4-speed transmission along with a high and low gear multiplier, so that's essentially 8 speeds. In the first batch of these sets, there was an error in the instructions or the universal joints would be misaligned. If you built it exactly by the instructions, the misaligned joints would create speed differences which would cause the gearbox to crack. Fortunately, this error was addressed pretty quickly. However, even if you built it properly, the gearbox still had the potential to crack. You have to be exceptionally careful while building the Defender's gearbox, since any unnecessary friction could be a contributing factor to the problem here. Despite that, the Land Rover Defender remains easily one of the best Technic off-roaders ever, featuring fully independent suspension and even a winch. Which LEGO Technic off-roader do you prefer? The Defender with its 8 speeds, or the G-Wagon with its 2 speeds but differential locks? Speaking of differential locks, the next model makes them truly special. The LEGO Technic 4x4 Mercedes-Benz Zetro's trial truck was the first Technic set ever to introduce differential locks. The truck was an absolute beast, featuring a dual-motor drive, live-axle suspension, as well as motorized differential locks for the rear and central differentials. This made it possible for it to have truly insane off-road and climbing capabilities. Interestingly, it used a medium motor for the differential locks instead of a large one. The medium motor does not have a rotation sensor, so it just used mechanical limiters and a linear clutch. The Zetro's is also the 
only Technic set to feature this small motor, which is now discontinued sadly. I personally have lots of these motors and I found them quite practical in smaller creations. The Zetros had the perfect combination of advanced mechanisms along with practical playability. Anytime it got stuck in the rough terrain, you could simply lock the differentials and it could be on its merry way. I personally bought multiple copies of the Zetros and even had them race against each other. Next up is the LEGO Technic McLaren P1 Supercar, which introduced the 7-speed sequential transmission gearbox for the first time in the history of Technic. It worked by having an 8-speed gearbox replacing the 8th speed with a neutral gear. You might be thinking, isn't this just a worse version of what we had in the Lamborghini, Daytona and Bugatti? Absolutely not, because those just had a 4-speed transmission with a multiplier. The McLaren P1 features a real 8-speed transmission thanks to the ability to shift at 45-degree intervals, unlike 90 degrees of the old gearboxes. It utilized the gearbox drum and fork elements introduced in the Yamaha motorcycle. On top of that, it even featured clear engine blocks for its V8 engine. It introduced some brand new gears and truly took Technic transmissions to another level. The McLaren P1 itself truly looks gorgeous. The shaping with all its panels is impeccably done, and I especially love the way the headlights are created. The car is filled with mechanical impossibilities combined with the absolute beauty of Technic panels. Even something as simple as opening the doors just looks gorgeous. Finally, we have the motorized gearbox of the 8043 motorized excavator. Despite using only four motors, it could have independent control of six different functions. Seven if you include the gearbox switching itself. Every last cubic centimeter was used up with some sort of gear, and there is zero empty space inside the superstructure. All of its four motors were inside the top superstructure, so how did they have independent control of the two different tracks? Well, it used a very clever mechanism to pass two independent motions through the center of a single turntable. There was the central axle as well as a combination of driving rings surrounding the axle. After passing the turntable, the motions would be split into separate axles. If you would like to take a closer look at all of its mechanisms in my full review of the set with the building process racing brick style, then click on the video in the bottom left corner or click the recommended one above it. This is your Unbreak Me Here and I'll see you in the next one.